For a race that was dominated by one driver, I have to say that today's race, honestly, was not too bad. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. We just got done watching the Cup Series race for the Goodyear 400 at Darlington International Speedway, and like I just said, I thought today's race, honestly, for a race that was dominated by one driver, I thought, honestly, we saw a very, very solid race. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into the race review. So coming into this race, there was a few storylines coming event. Of course, this weekend was a throwback weekend. Also here at Darlington, we were running the 750 horsepower package, the low down force high horsepower package events. We were going to see more organic racing than what we've seen with the 550 horsepower package on the intermediate tracks. We got to see here at Darlington a lot of really good racing overall and also, of course, throwback week. The other big story is that Eric Amarola had to go to the rear of the field because he, he basically had, um I think he had a failed inspection twice and also Chase Elliott had unapproved adjustments. So both of those guys would have to go to the rear. So starting on the front row of today's race, you have Brad Kozlowski and I think Martin Trick Jr., who started on the front, actually Brad Kozlowski and, and Kevin Harvick, who actually would start on the front row. And the first caution in this race will come out on lap seven. The first caution will come out for Eric Amarola spinning down the backstretch on turn number two. Eric Amarola got a little bit of sideways coming off of turn number two, and Reagan Senesh Jr. got and collected him and turned him into basically the inside wall extremely hard, taking Eric Amarola out of the race. The luck that Eric Amarola has had so far in 2021 has been absolutely horrible. Really nothing he could do. He got a little sideways, but at the same time, there were also issues that took him out. So unfortunately, Eric Amarola was the first casualty in today's race. We go back racing for a few laps, and we see a couple lead changes in this race. Kevin Harvick was able to keep the race lead for a little bit. Then Kyle Busch was able to take the race lead, and he led a few laps. And then one lap short of getting his 18,000 lap lead, Mark Trick Jr. took the race lead, and Kyle Busch spun out coming into turn number four. Kyle Busch would have a flat right front or right rear tire, if I'm not mistaken, and he would spin down to the inside, and he would bring out the second caution of his race. And Truex would take the race lead and pretty much from this point dominate up to this point. Then we go back racing a lot 29 in this event, and we would pretty much stay green for pretty much the entirety of stage number one, with not a lot happening at this point. A lot of cumbers and goers throughout the field. Guys like Kyle Larson were coming to the front. Guys like Joey Logano were starting to fall back a little bit. Guys like, of course, Tyler Reddick were trying to charge up to the front. But coming out the final corner for stage one, Mark Jr. You know, will hold off Denny Hamlin. By the way, during the end of stage one as well, there was a lot of craziness happening. You had guys like Bubba Wallace and Kurt Busch and Kyle Busch who were trying to stay on the lead lap of this race. And they actually, well, some of them were able to, guys like Kyle Busch. But Wallace got passed by um, Martrex Jr., who was leader. He was really holding up Martrex Jr. And then he got passed by Kurt Busch at the end of stage one. And because of that, Martrex Jr., would come, like I said, would come out the final corner. And he would win stage one in this race. During the piss offs at that time, Kyle Larson actually would get a speeding penalty while he was running fourth. He would end up getting a speed up penalty, though he had a fast lift car. He would not fall out of this race, unfortunately, up to this point. We go back racing on lap um, number, I think it was number uh, 198 of this race. And then the second, the next incident of this race took place on lap 100 of the event for an incident between the 41 of Cole Custer and Anthony Alfredo. Cole Custer basically had got a little, had some help. Basically, Anthony Alfredo got a little bit of Cyrus and maybe trying to battle Quinn Half. He would spin down a racetrack, collect Cole Custer, and in the same spot that Eric Amarola crashed into, he would end up crashing to as well, taking him out of the race. So it's really unfortunate. Cole Custer was running, I believe, in the top 20 at the time, is having a decent run overall. This would take him out of contention in this race and take him out of the race in general. We go back racing for a few more laps, and the next incident would take place about eight laps later on lap 108, which were an incident between March, now March Jr., uh, Kurt Busch and Bubba Walls. Uh, Kurt Busch was trying to battle, uh, trying to stand a lead lap with Bubba Walls, and Bubba Walls would get back into Kurt Busch. Not intentionally, to be honest with you, they were battling, like I said, for the free pass position, and Kurt Busch would spin out the inside wall, bringing out the caution, taking Kurt Busch out of the race. Kurt Busch was not 100% happy with Bubba Walls at the time, but it was also his frustration because he was back there, and this team has kind of struggled throughout the year. Kurt Busch is already having problems coming into this point of the race. But Bubba Walls, because of this, because he was technically involved in the incident, Bubba Walls actually would not get the free pass position. That's right, because he technically was involved in the incident. He actually would not get the free pass, and no free pass was awarded. I found it very interesting, but I guess since technically he was involved in a wreck, I think that he honestly he deserved didn't well he kind of deserved a free pass, but also did at the same time. That's just my honest opinion on that. We go back racing a lap 115 in the event, and we actually stay green throughout the end of stage number two, with Mark Trex Jr. basically pulling out a massive, massive lead. Alex Bowman and Ryan Blaney, I believe those guys would have issues in stage number two as well. Both Alex Bowman and Ryan Blaney would have to come down pit road 
to basically fix the damage on their car. I believe in stage two, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's been a little bit since I watched race, but those two have to come down pit road at the end of number stage number two. But then coming out the final corner for the end of stage number two, Martin Trish Jr. would have like a 13 or 14 second lead, and he would win stage number two in this race. We go back racing a lap 194 of this event, and we actually would stay green throughout the whole entire final stage. So the big question was, could anybody beat Martin Truex Jr.? And there was two guys, really, in my opinion, that honestly he maybe had a shot to beat Martin Truex Jr., and that was Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson is really strong in the long runs, and Kyle Busch is also very, very strong on the longs runs as well. But the big question was, if they got close enough, were they going to be able to do anything? And Martin Truex Jr., of course, at the beginning of the run, he would actually pull away, but Kyle Larson would start making up ground and passing drivers like Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, and other drivers in the front of the field as well. And he would drive up to the front of the field up to this point in the race. And then we go, and then we continue racing, and then the final pit stops happen, and Joey Logano, who honestly had a very solid run going, running fourth at the time, he would unfortunately end up getting a speeding penalty, and this would take him out of contention this race on the final pit stops that took place. Place. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson, who had one lap, for, basically one lap on the tires, which he was up to speed, he caught up to Martrish Jr., and we got to see a pretty solid show at the end of the race. He thought that Kyle Larson was going to defeat Martrish Jr. as something very, that they brought up during the broadcast today. No driver that has won the stages in this race has been able to go out there and finish and close out a deal in dominate fashion. We've only had one driver so far really dominate race this year and score the victory lane at this point. Now, Kyle Larson was catching Martrix Jr. The tra traffic started coming into play. Kyle Larson made a very, very ballsy three-wide move between Ryan Newman, I believe it was Tyler Reddick, at the same time. And then it was this back and forth, basically. Larson was closing, then Truex pulled back, then Larson was closing, and Martrix Jr. pulled back. But unfortunately, with a few laps to go, Martrix Jr. basically had to use all, basically had basically the better car, and Larson had to use all his tires up. And unfortunately, because that, Larson was not able to catch Martrix Jr. And coming off the minor corner in dominating fashion, Martin Truex Jr. wins his third race of 2021 and leads, oh, I think like 250 laps in this race. Martin Truex Jr. leads a lot of laps. He's like 248 laps in today's race in dominating fashion and scores a win in today's race. In my opinion, best car of the field had the, deserves a win in my honest opinion. Huge congratulations to Martin Truex Jr. on becoming the first driver to win three races. By the way, the only driver with multiple wins. I think Martin Truex Jr. is becoming the favorite to win the championship right now with three victories up this point. And the Mark Trix Jr. of all that we saw in 2018 and 2019 and 2017 is definitely back for sure. And I think Mark Trix Jr. is becoming one of the favorites to win the championship. So like I said, huge congratulations to Mark Trix Jr. Let's talk about the race results. So Mark Trix Jr. wins here at Darlington. Kyle Larson finished the second. Now Kyle Larson was one of my guys that I wanted to watch in this race. Larson honestly was the only one in this race that I thought had anything for Mark Trix Jr. at the end. But unfortunately, he used to stuff up and had nothing for him. But Kyle Larson also had a battle back from a speeding penalty, and he was able to get up to second. Great run for Larson at the end of the day. Uh, Kyle Busch finishes third. Kyle Busch also had a battle from a ver back from adversity as well with a flat tire early in the race. He bounces back to third place run. Great run for Kyle Busch. I think Kyle Busch is starting to come back. He got a third place finish today. Great run from Kyle Busch in today's race. William Byron once again gets his fourth place, fourth straight, fourth a fourth place finish here at Darlington. He now has his, basically tied Jeff Gordon with the most top tens in a row to start a season. He's been absolutely incredible to watch. Great run for William Byron today. Denny Hamlin, another solid top five performance. Great run for Denny Hamlin in fifth place. He's also a guy that's been really consistent. That first one is coming from Denny Hamlin. I think it's going to happen here sooner or later. Kevin Harvick finished sixth. Solid run for Kevin Harvick. Not the best run he could have had, but he had a really awesome paint scheme as well. He finished his sixth in today's race. Uh, Chase Elliott finishes seven. Chase Elliott, in my honest opinion, he's been kind of disappointing this year. I expect a little more from Chase Elliott in today's race. He actually has my pick coming in this because he's been so good the last couple times he's been here. But Chase Elliott ran really not that great. Ran around 7th, 10th place most of the day. But he gets 7th place finish. Again, he's got plenty of time to get the season turned around and start building up here. Gets a 7th place finish show in today's race. Uh, Ryan Blaney finishes a saw run for Ryan Blaney. All things considered, he's not great here at Darlington historically. He gets a top 10 run, saw run for Ryan Blaney today. Uh, Chris Buescher finished ninth in today's race. He had a great performance today. He had an absolutely killer performance on the racetrack. He was really, really fast. Had a lot of speed in that car. And both the Roush cars honestly had a lot of speed because Ryan Newman ended up, I believe, finishing 10th in today's race. Yep. Both Roush cars finished in the top 10 today. Great runs for both of the Roush cars overall. And I think this is Ryan Newman's third or fourth top 10 of the year. So both Roush cars look really, really fast today. Two cars that I think should watch, especially if they're making the playoffs, because they were really, really good in today's race. Saw runs overall for them. 
Uh, Chase Briscoe finished 11. This is the best run Chase Briscoe has had all year. He's a guy, he honestly, that pitch strategy you got to stay out with Denny Hamlin early in the race, really, really helped him out overall. An 11th place run, he's really not had a great year, but gets a top 15 in this race. Great run for Chase Briscoe today. Uh, Tyler Reddick finished 12th. I'll be honest with you, I expect the Reddick to run a little bit better at the end of the race, but I think his car kind of fell off in the second half. He was really strong early in the race, ran in the top five early, but his car really fell back, but he still finishes in the top 15 in today's race. So, uh, Joey Logano finished his 13th. He recovers a little bit from that speeding penalty. He finished 13th in today's race. Christabel finished his 14th. He had a bad back from quite a bit of adversity as well at points in this race. He had a speeding penalty like Kyle Larson. He had a speeding penalty in this race as well. And he also, I believe, had a tire go down for getting into the outside wall. He finished 14th in today's race. He ran in the top 10 quite a bit today, so he deserved a better finish, in my honest opinion. Uh, Ross Chastain finished 15th, battle back as well a little bit in this race. They had a really bad strategy call for Ross Chastain because he decided to keep him out in the beginning of the race at the end of stage one. I really never understood the call by Ross Chastain. They kept him out. It really cost him a shot, a very good run. But he still finished this in the top 15. Saw a recovery, all things considered, for Ross Chastain. Austin Dillon finished 16th. I'll admit, I expect more from Austin Dillon in today's race, especially since the last time he ran here at Darlington, he ended up finishing second. But he still finished his 16th, another top 10, sick 20 run for Austin Dillon in today's race. Uh, Alex Bowman finished 17th. Alex Bowman had a lot of issues. I think he had to come down pit road a couple times due to tire rubs and tire issues. He finished 17th, though, in today's race. Eric Jones finished his 18th. Saw a run for him today. 19th place for Matt Benedetto. The worst finish Matt Benedetto has had in quite some time. Matty D ran a top 10 early in the race, but his car really wasn't good as the run went on. And he fell back and never had a shot to get back up there in contention in today's race. And Ricky Senos Jr. finishes 20th in today's race. Bubba Walls finishes 21st. Bubba Walls, man, things got to turn around with that team. They're definitely, the last couple weeks have not gone fantastic for them. I understand that that team is a new organization, but at some point that team is going to have to start picking up the pace and start working on it. That being said, I think Bubba Walls, as time goes on, he will get better. This track's coming up for him, but I think he'll run very well. I didn't expect him to run that great today, though, to be honest with you, because he's not historically that great at Darlington. I looked up his stats. He's not that great here. Uh, Corey Joy finishes 22nd in today's race. 23rd place goes to Daniel Suarez. Brad Keselowski finished 24th. Brad Keselowski was absolutely terrible in this race. He had no speed in the car. The car was terrible. He had tire issues throughout the race. He's not ran great here at Darlington historically, and today was no exception. He absolutely ran horrible in today's race. Uh, Ryan Priest finishes 25th in today's race. Anthony Alfredo finished 26th. Michael McDowell finished 27th. 28th for Justin Hilly. 29th for JJ Yilly, 30th for Quinn Howe, 31st for James Davison, 32nd place finish goes to BJ McLeod, 33rd place finish for Josh Blicky, 34th place for Cody Ware, 35th place finish goes to Kurt Busch, who ended up having issues, 36th place for Cole Custer, and finishing last in today's race is Eric Amarola. Let's go ahead and take a look at the points team he's coming after this race. So, Denny Hamlin in the regular season points has a 75 points lead over Martin Truex Jr. William Byers sits third in points right now in regular season points, 101 back. Joey Logano's fourth, 123 back. There's a tie for, there's actually a fifth place is Ryan Blaney, 124 back. Then you have a tie for sixth between Kyle Lars and Kevin Harvaker, 144 back. Chase Lady's eighth in the points, 147 back. Brad is ninth, 150 points back in the standings. Kyle Bush is 10th, 156 back. Chris Bell is 11, 209 back. Austin Dillon is currently sitting 12 in the points, 213 back. Chris Busher is sitting 13th in the points. Very consistent, by the way, sitting 242 back. Al Swim is 14, 248 back. Michael Dallas, 15th in the points. So now he currently sits 251 back. And we have a tie for 16th between Tyler Reddick and Matty D, who both sit 261 back. Then you have Ricky Sinas Jr. in 18 in the points, who currently sits right now, as we speak, 19 behind the cutoff line. And, and Ryan Newman sits 19th in the points, 22 behind the cutoff line. And Kurt Busch sits 20th in the points, standings 289 back in about 20 something points behind the cutoff line. Mashy, right now, Matt Benedetto is currently sitting in the playoffs as we speak. There's a tie between him and Tyler Reddick. I think Matty D would get that tiebreaker, though, at this point. So now I'll give you my score and thoughts on today's race. Honestly, was that the best race I've seen this year? No, absolutely not. We've definitely seen better races so far this year. That being said, I would rather watch that kind of racing where the best car ended up winning every single day. I'd rather watch that with high hor horsepower and low downforce where guys are slipping and sliding and have to use control in their race cars and get around the racetrack. 
I would rather see that in a race, in my honest opinion, than see a race where a driver can absolutely lose on a 550 horsepower package where it's wide open and you can't really tell who are the best guys overall. There's talent that does take place in that, of course, but it's not the best overall racing we get to see. The racing we saw today was a lot better, in my opinion, than what we've seen at certain points this year. Not saying that all the 550 horsepower package races have sucked this year. Vegas and Homestead were really, really good. But I would rather watch a race like Darlington where slipping and sliding happens and you can have issues in the race and legitimate things happen in the race than a race see a race where you don't have anything happen because it's wide open racing and a bunch of crazy restarts end up happening. And I'm sorry if you don't like that a driver like Mark Trix Jr. wins the race and dominates the race, but that sometimes is going to happen in a race. You have to accept that sometimes and get with the time. Sometimes it's okay for the best car in the race to win. That's just my honest opinion of that. So because of that, I'm going to give today's score at Darlington International Speedway an 8 out of 10. Once again, a very solid race overall, and I actually absolutely enjoyed today's race here at Darlington International Speedway. So, anyway, that is going to be for today's race if you're from Darlington International Speedway. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, notifications, you'll be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Link description below for that, and comment your thoughts on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race? Let me know in the comments below, and congratulate Mark Trick Jr. on winning today's race, and let me know your score on tonight's race in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content. Take care, everybody.